Greetings, everybody. It is I, 480 Volts. I'm sorry it's taken so long for me to finally get around to making another video. I've been busy with W-A-O-R-L-S, which stands for Work and Other Real Life Stuff. But now it is time for my next review. Today we're going to be taking a look at one of my very favorite video game franchises ever. And here's a hint. It's about somebody who is blue, but is not Sonic the Hedgehog. Well, if that narrows it down, I must be talking about none other than Echo the Dolphin! Nah, I'm just totally kidding. You already know it's Mega Man. Let's go. If you've hung around my channel for a bit, you'll know that I love the Blue Bomber to death. I'm not entirely sure why, but I think it has to do with the setting. A futuristic timeline in which the world's workforce consists of robots. But we'll get into that later. The Mega Man franchise on a whole is something I have known about for only 10 years now, but I got into it very quickly, and I love it to this day. I am also very excited for the upcoming release of Mega Man 11. Now just to be clear, in the coming months I plan to review the first 8 games of the Classic series, the first 6 games of the X series, and I may consider the Zero series. Other than that, I have no plans for any of the other spin-offs, of which there are quite a few. For now, let's have a brief history lesson. Before Mega Man, Capcom primarily made arcade games and their console releases were mostly ports of these titles. In the mid-1980s, Capcom made plans to develop Mega Man specifically for the Japanese home console market. They decided to bring in fresh, young talent for the small team, including artists such as and I apologize to anybody who's Japanese or who speaks Japanese for the wonderful names that I am about to just completely obliterate and slaughter. Yasuki Kishimoto, Neoa Tomita, Akira Kitamura, who is also the project's director, and of course, Keiji Inafune, or credited as Inafu King, a recent college graduate who started on the Street Fighter team. Because the development team was so small, Inafune ended up designing and pixelating most of, if not all of, the characters. Inafune recalled that the Mega Man development team worked extremely hard to complete the final product with a project, supervisor, and lead designer who sought perfection in every possible aspect of the game. In this video, we are going to be taking a look at the very first installment of the series originally developed on the Nintendo Entertainment System in 1987. The story is rather simple. Household robots rock and roll were created by the scientist Dr. Thomas Light, or Dr. Wright in the original Japanese, or as I like to call him, not Santa Claus, in the year 2000 sometime or another. Also, ha ha ha, rock and roll, nice names. This was only the first hint of Capcom's obsession with rock music, of which 480 approves. Dr. Light, along with fellow university graduate Dr. Albert Wiley, or as I like to call him, not Albert Einstein, had also created six community workforce robots, better known as Robot Masters. Everything was calm and peaceful, and no one ever had a care in the world until one day, Dr. Wily decided he'd rather be evil, so he stole the six robot masters and reprogrammed them to help him take over the world. No, seriously, that's all he needs. Dr. Robotnik is over here trying to capture as many woodland creatures as he can to power his robot army, as well as constantly trying to get his hands on the Chaos Emeralds, Master Emeralds, Time Stones, Chaos Rings, and all that other junk, while Wily apparently only needs six robots to take over the world. Alright then. Rock, being a stout defender of truth, justice, and the robotic way, asks Dr. Light that he be converted into a super fighting robot, which, as we will learn in the later games, was an idea that Dr. Light had worked on before. In any case, Dr. Light gave Rock a blue suit, blue helmet, a pea shooter, and voila! The super fighting robot Mega Man was born. Or if you're playing the original Japanese, 
Rockman. Now, you know how I feel about name changes. I don't care if it's Rockman or Mega Man. I don't care if it's Eggman or Robotnik. I don't care if it's Laurel or Yanny. That being said, I still kind of prefer the name Rockman. Because not only does 480 really love rock music, but it's consistent with his pre-battle robot name being Rock. Incidentally, in the PlayStation Portable remake of this game, Mega Man Powered Up, his original name was simply Mega. Well, on the plus side, this makes for a much smoother transition between names than going from Rock to Mega Man. On the downside, the game did not bother renaming his sister, so together, they are Mega Enroll. Did nobody inform the Power Up development team? Were they really that unfamiliar with music? Alright then. I still think Mega Man is a cool name regardless, and we'll forgive Capcom for making that change when the game came to America. Anyway, back to the story. Mega Man heads out to defeat the Robot Masters and ultimately stop Dr. Wily. Even though I spent a lot of time covering the story, it really is simplistic and straight to the point. This is not really a bad thing though, it's been working really well for the classic game so far. Now let's talk about the gameplay. Everything I know about this game's story comes from the internet, or the opening of Mega Man 4. Before that, I assumed it came from the game's manual because it certainly didn't come from the game itself. Once you start the game, you are greeted with a very simple, silent, and straightforward title screen prompting you to press start. Doing so brings up the stage select screen bringing us, already, to Mega Man's most definitive gameplay style. The first six stages are symbolized by each Robot Master, and the order of stage progression is left entirely up to you. Rather than starting with one specific stage, which leads to the next stage, which leads to the next, yada yada yada, each stage consists of Mega Man running and jumping through tricky platforming sections while blasting enemies with his arm cannon. A boss battle with each respective Robot Master marks the end of the stage. What makes Mega Man unique is that each Robot Master has their own type of weapon, and upon defeating them, Mega Man will scan their programming and copy their weapon data onto his own programming, allowing you to be able to use their weapons for the rest of the game. Also, each Robot Master takes a noticeably higher amount of damage from one of the other weapons obtained from the other Robot Masters, thus giving you more efficient ways to defeat a Robot Master. This idea, which has remained the most definitive staple in the entire franchise, was inspired by Rock Paper Scissors, in which Rock Beats Scissors Beats Paper Beats Rock. Only in this case it's Rock Beats Scissors Beats Electricity Beats Ice Beats Fire Beats Bombs Beats Rock. Even though it is possible to beat all of these guys with the arm cannon, some are definitely harder than others. Special tip, if you're new to this game, I don't exactly recommend starting with the Lech Man. <coughs> Just a little suggestion. Some guys like Bomb Man, Guts Man, and Cut Man go down pretty easy with the arm cannon and are ideal choices to begin the game with since you have to fight at least one of these guys with nothing but the arm cannon. Using their assigned weaknesses, is the most efficient way of beating them, and most of them will go down pretty easily. <coughs> Although, some of them can be kinda cheap. Honestly, this made the old Mega Man games so much more challenging than they are today, because nowadays, all you have to do is look on the internet for a weak disorder, but back then, you had to figure that crap out for yourself. Yes, kids, the internet wasn't always a thing. As far as the stages themselves are concerned, they're basic platforming sections with lots of little robots to destroy. The special weapons you obtain are not reserved for use against the Robot Masters only, oh no. You can use these weapons throughout different parts of different stages. Some of them are more useful than others. My personal favorite is the electric beam because it shoots in three directions at once and uses up the least amount of ammunition, which you do have to be mindful of. Every robot in this game, including Mega Man, has a health bar while not visible for non-bosses, is still there. You can switch weapons by pressing the start button, thus pausing the action and bringing up the weapons menu. Each weapon gives Mega Man a different color scheme while selecting that weapon. In stage, enemies can drop ammo packs, big or small, upon being killed, which you can use to refill the ammo of your special weapons. However, you must select a weapon to refill its ammo. If you grab an ammo pack without selecting any kind of weapon, the ammo goes to waste as the arm cannon has unlimited ammo. Enemies can also drop health packs, big or small, which you can use to refill your health bar. 
enemies can also drop the coolest item in the entire franchise, a score ball. What's so cool about this? It adds more points to your overall score. If you beat this game with a really high score, guess what? You beat this game with a really high score. Okay, so the score is completely useless, and this was the only game to ever feature it. Although some of the later X games did feature a level up system of sorts. Enemies may also drop extra lives, of which you can hold up to nine, or nothing at all. If you find yourself needing some extra ammo or health and the drop rate hasn't been too favorable, enemies respawn almost as soon as their encounter spot goes off screen, so you can keep backtracking to make enemies reappear and keep killing them in hopes that they'll give you something to work with. You can also find ammo, health, and extra lives at certain parts of stages. Okay, so we defeated all six robot masters. Now what? Oh, okay, the center of the stage select menu now shows Dr. Wily, so let's see what this is all about. Alright then. Now it's time to begin the Wily stages. Unlike the Robot Master stages, these do progress in a specific order. The stages are a bit more challenging than the Robot Master stages, and each one ends with a boss battle. Sadly, you won't get any special weapons for defeating these bosses, but they still are weak to some of the weapons you picked up from the Robot Masters. Some of these battles are really cool and creative and not too difficult. And then there's this piece of garbage right here. There are no words to describe how annoying this guy is, but I shouldn't have to at this point. The Yellow Devil is universally considered to be one of the most hated bosses in Mega Man history, as evidenced by the fact that Capcom would feature him in some of the later games as a friendly little reminder that they are still in charge and can make your life miserable whenever they please. In fact, I bet he, or some form of him, will be a boss in Mega Man 11. You heard it folks, 480 called it right here, right now. This form is by far the hardest. It is however extremely easy if you spam the crap out of the select button, thanks to a hit detection glitch. I feel like such a failure as a gamer because I have never once, to this day, been able to beat this guy without exploiting this glitch. Also Cutman and Electman reappear in the first Wily stage and to progress, you need to defeat them again, one at a time, and there are no trusty boulders to throw at Cutman this time, so you have to use your arm cannon or some other weapon while the other four reappear in the fourth and final Wily stage, one at a time, before the final battle with Dr. Wily, which isn't too difficult if you know which weapons to use. Upon being defeated, Dr. Wily begs for mercy, and then... the credits? The world of Mega Man does follow the laws of robotics, so we know that Mega Man obviously did not kill Dr. Wily, I guess he just accepted his apology and went on his merry way? Alright, that was something. A common complaint about this game I have heard is its high difficulty. Call me crazy, but I don't really think that this game is incredibly hard. Make no mistake, it is unforgiving in many ways. For instance, you can find an item in a Lechman stage that lays down a beam of magnetic energy upon which you can walk. You'll need either Gutsman's or a Lechman's weapons to destroy the rocks blocking it, and it uses up ammo like any other weapon. If you don't grab it, guess what? You ain't finishing the game. It seems completely optional, but there is a section in the first Wily stage in which you have to use it to make it up a vertical wall section. You have no other means of making it through this section. Thankfully, this game, unlike some other titles of its era, has unlimited continue. So if you made it to this point and realized that you didn't have it and were like, Ah, oh, bummer. You could let yourself die enough times to get a game over and go back to the stage select, re-enter a Lechman stage, and grab the stupid thing this time. Sure, there is no way to exit a stage once you've entered it aside from getting another game over and thus not grabbing the magnetic beam, but at least when you go back to a Robot Master stage, which you have already completed, you won't have to fight the Robot Master again. Also, you might see platforms over spikes from time to time. Don't fall in spikes, please.
Also, when you clear a Wily stage, you begin the next one immediately, with no breaks in between, and with your weapons having the exact amount of ammo they had when you beat the last Wily stage. In other words, if you beat the first Wily stage with half of your electric beam and three quarters of your rolling cutter, you will start the second Wily stage with half of your electric beam and three quarters of your rolling cutter. Ammo packs aren't that useful in the main stages, but in the Wily stages, they are worth more than gold. Thankfully, right before the last four Robot Masters return in the fourth Wily stage, the game offers you this nifty little item that maximizes your health and ammo if you can grab it. Also, if you are playing this game on the original NES, you have no way to save your progress. This was true for many games of its era, but I mention it here because later Mega Man games provided ways for you to stop for the day and pick up tomorrow right where you left off, but in this game, unless you're playing a digital release or have an emulator with the super godlike power of save states, it's start to finish or bust, baby. In terms of raw difficulty, though, I would say that this game is just right. It's not brutally unfair, nor is it too easy. The platforming itself is very innovative and very tricky, but it's not anything that you can't get better without practice. One thing that makes the platforming easier is the ability to change direction mid-jump, something Mario's fat butt just couldn't do very well. That being said, Mega Man does control a little on the stiff side, especially when underwater. The graphics are okay, the textures are adequately detailed, and the range of colors is pretty good. Nothing too special for the NES, although I will say that I absolutely adore Dr. Wily's in-game sprite. His official artwork just doesn't compare. His in-game sprite just looks so evil and soulless, and adding that to the dark, empty background during the final battle really makes it feel more climatic. Of course, you cannot talk about a Mega Man game without bringing up the music. Manami Matsume composed this game's music, created the sound effects, and programmed the data in three months. Considering how good the music is, that's quite impressive. A few tracks here and there are a bit bland and the sound effects are quite simplistic, but the overall soundtrack is just great, something I will be saying for a lot of Mega Man games to come. I love certain tunes like Bomb Man Stage, Elect Man Stage, and Cut Man Stage. They just they just feel very Mega Man-y, if that makes any sense. I also like the victory music that plays each time you defeat a boss. Most remixes or rearrangements of Mega Man tunes I've heard are done in a rock style. I'm not sure if that was the original intention or not, but it would be consistent with the name Rock Man, and since I love rock music so much, I'm on board. So, at the end of the day, Mega Man is not perfect. It has a lot of rough spots to iron out, but it's still pretty good for a first installment, and we can only hope that it gets even better from here. But I can still say that I really like this game. Well, anyway, thanks for joining me for our very first look at the classic Mega Man series. Uh, I don't know when my next review will be or what it will be, so uh, just uh, kind of be patient and bear with me. But I would like to ask that you check out my new album that just dropped out on SoundCloud. It is uh, it's a collection of some video game remixes that I have made that are not related to Mega Man or Final Fantasy. I got a lot of those remixes and they'll probably take up their own things. So uh, if you're interested, the link's in the description. Please, uh, please click on that and check it out. Uh, <clears throat> it's completely free. You don't have to pay a penny. Uh, I will not receive a penny. I just really want to share my music, you know. And, uh, and feel free, even though it's not on the album, feel free to check out some of my other remixes, like more Mega Man stuff, for instance, like the Stage Select remix that you heard in this video. It's, it's on SoundCloud as well, but uh, yeah. So, uh, until next time, see ya!